Thank you very much. And that concludes portfolio questions. We're going to move on now to the next item, which is a statement by Joe Fitzpatrick on tackling drug-related deaths. And the Minister will, of course, take questions at the end of his statement. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question to uh, press their request to speak buttons. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick. Thank you, officer. My statement today provides an update on the action we're taking to tackle the continued rise in drug deaths in Scotland. What we face is a public health emergency. The latest figures show that 1,187 people lost their lives due to drug use in 2018. Each and every one of those is a tragedy for the individual, for their family, for their friends and communities. I'm sure I speak for the whole chamber in sending my sincerest condolences to all of those who have lost a loved one. Last month, NRS also published the annual review of demographic trends, which showed that life expectancy improvement have stalled in Scotland. Drug-related deaths have been highlighted as one of the reasons for this change. Both of these reports put in stark reality the effect that drug use has on the population of Scotland. Sending off the, officer, September the 1st marked International Overdose Awareness Day, a day which has come to be an all too painful reminder to many across our country in recent years. To mark the day, I attended an event hosted by Adaction Dundee, where I heard directly from a range of people who have been affected by the loss of a family member, friend or loved one from substance use. I know that members uh, across the chamber also attended events around the country, and we are all indebted to the courage of those who spoke. But the deaths caused by substance use are avoidable. This government, this parliament and the nation needs to work together to address this emergency. I am determined that we will continue to do all the, all the things that we can with the powers that we have and will continue to press the UK government to work with us on those vital issues to deliver change. Today, I am asking for the continued support of Parliament for the actions we are taking and support in particular for the new tax force. There is no one easy solution. We need to look to the evidence to see what has worked both internationally and closer to home. For example, we know that having individuals engaged with treatment services can have a protective effect. So it is vital that we do all that we can to increase the number of people engaging with services, particularly those most at risk. We also know from the evidence that opioid substitution therapies can save lives, reduce the risk of lethal relapse, improve quality of life and reduce crime. We need to do more to ensure that it is not, its use is not further stigmatised but also that we make it easier for those who need it to have access to it. That is whether there, it be through the low th threshold service or doing more to address the high levels of discharge, discharge from some services, as well as ensuring people are on the optimal dose. The new task force will have a central aim of identifying measures to improve, um, improve health by preventing and reducing drug use, harm and related deaths. The task force will also examine what other factors are key drivers of drug deaths and advise on further changes in practice or in the law that could help, help to save, li save lives and reduce harm. I've asked Professor Katrina Matheson, an internationally respected expert in addiction studies from the University of Stirling to chair the group. In addition to Professor Matheson, there will be representatives on the task force from Police Scotland and the Crown Office, but also from RCGP, Community Justice Scotland, the Chief Medical Officer, the Chief Social Worker, amongst others. The task force will also include the voices of lived and living experience, both from an individual in recovery perspective, but also from the perspective of family members. This is an integral part of the work, and having that input into the meetings will be invaluable. I met with Professor Matheson this week to discuss with uh, their, the upcoming work ahead of the, the first full meeting of the task force, which will take place on the 17th of September. One thing that we are both clear on is that this group needs to identify areas for change or improvement quickly, rather than meet for months, then issue a final report. Instead, we need action soon. As as well as setting up the, the group, um, there has been a, lot, a significant amount of activity going on. Uh, for example, Professor Matheson has begun to take on additional engagements in her new role, including engaging with the chief pharmacist to discuss the stocking of naloxone in pharmacies, and also introducing a community recovery event in, in Kilmarnock aimed at developing evidence at a community level. There is much that is on, ongoing which will also make a difference for those living with problem substance use. 
For example, we published a new alcohol and drug strategy at the end of last year and the approach taken to see substance use as a public health issue and the importance of recognising the rights of those imp people impacted has been broadly welcomed. The rights-based approach as set out in the strategy has been taken up by the Scottish Recovery Consortium who have been exploring just what taking a rights-based approach to recovery means. In July, we will publish a partnership delivery framework which sets out in, in July, we published a, a partnership delivery framework which sets out a shared ambition across local government and Scottish government that local areas have specific arrangements around substance use in place. Furthermore, an action plan setting out how we in government, in collaboration with a range of partners, will deliver on the remaining commitments in the strategy. We'll be going out uh, for further consultation on that with our alcohol and drug partnerships um, in the coming weeks for publication in October. We'll also uh, shortly be consulting on a workforce development framework developed alongside the Scottish Drugs Forum, um, which will support the workforce to better identify and support people who experience alcohol and drugs problems. In August, the Dundee Commission, looking specifically at drug deaths, published its findings. Prior to its publication, I met with the chair and authors of that report to discuss how we can enact some of the recommendations from it. Over the summer, I also gave evidence at Westminster to the Scottish Select Affairs Committee um, their helpful and wide-ranging inquiry into problem drug use in Scotland. Thus far, the Home Office have failed to give evidence, which is frustrating because drugs law affecting Scotland's ability to take a public health approach is reserved. In August, the ONS published the latest figures for drug related um, to, relating to drug poisoning in, in England and Wales, which showed that there were at the highest level on record. With figures like these, surely this is an issue that we should be able to work together across parliaments on. I contacted the previous Home Secretary following the publication of the Scottish figures and have since written to the new Home Secretary twice asking the UK government um, to engage with us, including an invitation to take part in a summit on this vital issue. And so far, um, I have not had a response. I'm adamant that this should not be a political nor a constitutional issue and I would very much welcome a commitment from the UK government to work with, or with us. One of the areas that was the focus um, of my session at the inquiry and indeed which has become up numerous times since the publication of the drug death figures is around the introduction of an overdose prevention facility in Glasgow. I visited such a facility in Paris in June and I'm convinced by the evidence that it could make a massive difference to many of the most desperate circumstances. We've repeatedly asked the UK government to allow us to move forward with the introduction of this type of service and it was raised by the First Minister at our first meeting with the Prime Minister. But while important, such, um, as such, this is not the answer to all of our problems. As I've said before, we need to be open to exploring new ideas supported by evidence which might make a difference. One such proposal is the introduction of a heroin assisted treatment service which the Health and Social Care Partnership in Glasgow are progressing and which is expected to open later this year. While only able to treat a small number of people compared to an overdose prevention facility, um, provision, providing the option of prescribed heroin to some of those people who have been in and out of treatment services for a number of years could be the difference between life and death for them. Another area that the task force will look at is around drug testing and as has been offered at a number of festivals and other sites in England. Recognising the problem, however, is only the first part of the solution. Since 2008, we've invested nearly £800 million to tackle problem alcohol and drug use. And in a programme for government, we've allocated a further £10 million over the next two years, specifically to support local services and provide targeted support. This is in addition to the £20 million per year which was delivered through the programme for government since 2017 and which is continuing to make a difference to treatment services. This is new money which will go towards initiatives that will change and improve the lives of those affected by problem substance use. It is money that will allow our new task force to support pathfinder projects, test new approaches and drive forward specific work to improve the quality of services based on evidence. This will allow us to establish joint working protocols between alcohol and drug services and mental health services with the aim of improving access and assessment um, and outcomes for individuals and develop, test integrated, develop and test integrated services for mental health, alcohol and drug use. 
Further, it's, it will um, aid us in developing a new national pathway for opiate replacement therapies, which will increase the effectiveness across the country. Crucially, this will help us to reduce the stigma associated with its use. I know that health, health spokespeople across this parliament want to make progress in, on this area, and I welcome that in advance of the first meeting of the Drug Death Task Force, you have accepted um, uh, an offer from Professor Matheson uh, to meet and discuss the subject. Having cross-party support will be vital as we try to address this tragic loss of life and improve the health of those most impacted by problematic substance use. I'm committed to working across the chamber and I hope that spokespeople can make a similar commitment to work with me as we seek to make a real difference to those, this vulnerable section of society. I'll finish today by reminding members of, the upcoming, of an upcoming event. September is International Recovery Month. And as part of that, the Scottish Recovery Consortium and their friends and partners organise a recovery walk. This year, the walk will be taking place in Inverness on the 21st of September. And I'll be there as I was in Glasgow last year and Dundee the year before. And I'm sure it will be a fantastic celebration of all things recovery. Part of the day also includes a Rosa ceremony to commemorate each of those lives lost to substance use in the previous year. This is a particularly poignant moment that visually represents representation of the scale of loss sits heavily with me. I'm determined that I will do everything I can to reduce the harms associated with substance use and I call on everyone across the chamber to join with us to help save lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's a lot of interest in this uh, debate as you can imagine so I could encourage all members to keep their questions and the answers concise. Miles Briggs. Officer, and I'd like to thank the Minister for advanced copy of his statement. We all agree that we need to develop a radical new approach to address the drug deaths emergency and increasing drug misuse facing individuals, families and communities across our country. And I wish the task force members well and hope they can help take forward a consensus and drive real and positive change. Families and people with lived experience want to be directly involved in the work of the task force. And I have concerns that to date we've seen limited scope for their involvement. I visited the Lockheed Hub in the Public Health Minister's constituency during recess and was told by drug service workers and users about cuts to drug education projects in primary and secondary schools in Dundee. This public health emergency needs cross-ministerial and cross-governmental department working to develop the radical new approach which we all want to see. If that doesn't happen, then ministers will not turn this national emergency around. Can I therefore ask the minister, why in his statement is there no mention of education and prevention? Can he assure me that this will be a priority? And will the minister also agree to monthly meetings with health spokesmen to make sure that the work of this is taken forward? Minister. Thank, thank the member for his, um, his, his comments and his good wishes to the task force, because I think that, that is... Uh, crucially important and I also thank him for the tone of his questions. I think there were three main points which I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, to, to address as briefly as I can but there were substantial points. I think the first point that the member made was hugely important in terms of lived experience and I'm absolutely clear that at the heart of the task force um, has to be lived experience both lived by, by um, individuals themselves but also by, by family who've been affected. And, and so you'll see from the, from the task force, which I think spokespeople have, it's now published on the, on the Scottish Government's website, that there, there are specifically um, people from both those groups in order to, but their role is not simply to be the token person. Their, their role, I, I, I hope, will be to, to make sure that we are managing to reach out and get that, that wider voice. And I think it's worth saying that it, it would be impossible to get everyone in, into a room that could add value to the task force. Um, so I, I think as the task force goes on, and I'm sure Katrina Matheson will be happy to discuss this with, with members, um, spokespeople, um, they would be expected to, to look to, to out, out with, uh, with, with their, their number to, for other expert advice. And there's, you know, we, we could have had a, a huge number of, of, of people who can add to this, and I think it's important that we, we hear all of those voices, but lived experience and living experience is absolutely crucial. Um, in, in terms of um, education, it's, it's obviously impossible to, to get everything into a statement as, as, as we have today. So I, I think, um, as I say, if you speak to Katrina, um, she should be open to the particular points. I think education is very important. Um, I think one of the, the things that we were seeing is that we're actually doing quite well there. So levels of drug use um, across Scotland in younger people remains relatively low, but it does appear that, that and there's anecdotal evidence that perhaps there are, are 
um, areas where that's not the case and we need to, to be mindful to make sure that our education is as up to date as possible. I think that's partly why I, th I um, am supportive of the, the principle of moving to, to, to having some sort of a drug testing system in order to make sure that the, the information that we're giving people is as good as possible. And I'm sorry, I've forgotten the third point, which is probably too much, but I will. Monthly meetings, I think that's a great idea. If, if spokespeople are up for that, and we can discuss how you take that forward, but yeah. Thank you, Monica Lennon. I thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement and for his time over the summer recess when we met to discuss the seriousness of the drug death crisis that is gripping Scotland. This is a public health emergency. Those who have died are not statistics to be debated. They are human beings, mums, dads, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, our friends, people who are gone forever and people we should have been able to save. So I am glad that the Minister acknowledges that these deaths are avoidable. There is a lot to welcome in today's statement. However, since the 2018 figures were published in July, we have to accept the reality that things are getting worse instead of better. So whilst we welcome the establishment of the task force, I repeat the question I asked the First Minister on Tuesday. Will the Scottish Government legally designate a public health emergency the way they would with any other major event that was causing such a huge loss of life under the existing powers that they have? So that they can compel every public body, health boards, councils, the police, everyone on the front line to take the urgent and bold action now that we need to take to save lives. Minister. Again, thank Monica Lynn for the constructive way she has approached this subject. Um, and it is clear from all of the spokespeople that, that this does indeed go beyond uh, normal party politics. And, and, and I appreciate the way that that's been taken forward. Um, she's absolutely right in terms of the, 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 the lives lost and, 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 and how important it is for us to remember that each individual, you know, there's a big number there, but each individual loss is, a, is, a, is an individual tragedy. In terms of a public health emergency, um, I, I think, and, and, and using some, some legal levers, I think I, I, this is an emergency and it is a, a, a public health emergency. That, so that is a fact. Um, I, and and the, the, the suggestions around um, all of our public services working together, that, that's central to the strategy that I launched last November. And, and you know, that's exactly why we want to do that. And that's why the action plans that we have are about making sure that our services, rather than putting people into boxes, as in somebody who requires a housing problem, somebody who has a substance um, misuse problem, somebody who has a mental health problem, that we bring all that together in a more intricated way and look at the person um, and, and all of their needs. Uh, I think that's crucial. The, the idea of being able to use some sort of legal power, um, I think that comes from Canada, where I think it was British Columbia was able to effectively press a legal button, which meant that the, the, the Canadian federal government had to take particular actions based on that. Unfortunately, that button is not there. If there's any suggestion, I genuinely mean, if we can sit down, if there's a legal mechanism that I can press a button in order to make the UK government respond in the way that the British Columbia go uh, government were able to make the Canadian government respond, I'm, I can assure you I'd press it. I would press it. We should be able to press it. Um, because, but yeah, so I'm happy to engage with, with um, Monica Lennon on that in the constructive way that she has engaged with me. Alison Johnson to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you. Um, drug deaths are avoidable, yet Scotland now has the highest rate in the EU. So the government's recognition that this is a public health crisis is welcome, as is the consensus that we need to act together cross party, cross parliament. I'd like to ask what steps the minister can take to ensure that community practices who really know what they're doing, like the Edinburgh Access Practice, have got the capacity and the resources they need to ensure they can continue to deliver the, the fabulous help that they provide. Um, sometimes it's too difficult for people to get onto the programmes they want to or they're on them for a very short time. So what action will the Minister take to ensure they can do the best they can because they do a great job? Thank you. Minister. Thank, thank the Member um, for her question and also thank her for um, raising the work of the Edinburgh Access, Access Practice. Um, it's a practice that I, that I visited um, around uh, Christmas New Year time. Um, they do some fantastic work and they're, they're staffed um, by some amazing people. Um, I... I think in the past, I think we've perhaps talked a little bit too much about um, looking to find new innovation. Um, and so which is why I've been clear in my statement that as well as looking at the best international evidence, we need to look 
closer to home as well. So where there is, there is good practice here, which perhaps needs a bit of support, then it, it, um, I think we've been clear that the, the additional money that's been funded would be available for that as well. Um, but I, I think one of the things that I, I was at the, um, the North East Hub, uh, Recovery Hub uh, in Edinburgh this morning, and one of the things that we were talking about was, you know, there's, there is lots of pockets of really good practice across the country, and maybe we need to think about how we can facilitate some of that practice, getting together and being able to share share that best practice. And you know that doesn't necessarily then require money. It just it's it's about sharing ideas and and I guess helping people to realise that they are part of a much bigger um, uh, campaign and and f uh, fight ag against the drug deaths. So I think we should do what we can to facilitate that. Willie Rennie to be followed by Emma Harper. The, the Minister just talked about international evidence and I would encourage him to ask the task force to look at the Portuguese model, which is actually trying to get it on the basis of treating it as a health issue rather than a criminal issue. And they've had some success in that regard. Because we are clearly failing when 50% of those leaving Adewell test positive for illegal drugs. That's a system that is clearly not working. And this is harrowing stuff with a large number of deaths. So will I urge the Minister to look at the Portuguese model? And if it requires UK-wide action on this, that's exactly what we should be asking for, because the current drugs policy is clearly not working. Minister. Thank the member very much for all of that contribution. Um, <coughs> I, I certainly think this is an area we should be able to work across the two, two parliaments with. I think if we look at Portugal, we see a country which 20 years ago was on a trajectory to have similar levels of drug deaths as Scotland now has. Um, and they, they took a bold decision, um, a decision that no other country in Europe was in a position to take at that time. We've taken a bit longer to come to the, the, the idea that we need to, to deal with this as a public health issue, um, which is effectively what Portugal did 20 years ago. I wouldn't for a second suggest you could just take what has been done in Portugal and import it to Scotland. But I do think that we, we need to start looking at this across these islands as a public health issue. Um, and, and I thank the member for, for not making this some sort of constitutional issue. We just need to, 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 to make these changes, however it, however it happens. And if the UK government won't help us do that, then, then I'm absolutely delighted to work with Willie Rennie to find other ways for us to achieve that. Um, the most obvious way would, to, would be to give this parliament the powers to do that. And that's not any kind of constitution. It's just, can we just get on with it? Because we, we, we have got an emergency here in Scotland. Emma Harper to fill by Brian Whittle. Can I ask the Minister to provide further detail on the commitment on page 102 of the programme for government, which states that a national pathway for opiate replacement therapy will be developed? And can you outline whether this plan includes the prescribing of Buvidal, which has shown to reduce some stigma associated due to its method of administration? Minister. Um, thank the member for that question. She is absolutely right. SMC um, published advice recommended Buvidal as a therapy for adults and adolescents aged 16 or over um, uh, with a dependency uh, on opioids such as heroin and morphine. I think it, it is really important that there, there are a range of options um, for, for people. Clearly, the decision about what is best for someone is a, a discussion between the uh, individual and, and their clinician, and, and that is how the, the, that should be taken forward. But it is good that there is now another um, option in, in that they can discuss. Brian Whittle to be followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can, can I start by just saying to the Minister that, that sort of contrary to your assertion, there's no uh, collaboration between Westminster and uh, Scottish Parliament. Members of the Health and Sport Committee who are all in here today uh, actually have been taking part in the Scottish Affairs Committee investigation at Westminster. So I do think the Scottish Parliament uh, and Westminster are actually starting to work together on this. But what I wanted to ask was, with any tragic death, there is a huge impact on the family and the community. So I wanted to ask the Minister what consideration has the Scottish Government given to support for those suffering the aftermath of such a tragic loss to drugs and alcohol addiction? Minister. Um, for, for, first of all, I, I do appreciate that there, there is good um, work going on between the Scottish Affairs Committee and the Health Committee, and there's been a number of exchanges there. My issue is with the UK government. Drugs policy remains reserved. Um, if we don't want to have that constitutional argument about it being devolved here, then can the UK government please sit down with us, at least answer the request to sit down and have a meeting to discuss how we can make some of these public health approaches which the evidence shows will make a difference. 
Um, I should probably add, in terms of some of those approaches, that that is part of the area that the task force will look at. So it will look beyond our powers as to what might make a difference in Scotland. Because if, at the end of all those discussions, um, the way forward is that ultimately Westminster decide to devolve those powers to this parliament, then I think we should um, be ready in order to rise to that challenge and, and look for what, what will make a difference. So I think that's really important. And I've now forgotten the members of yeah, you're at, yeah that, and I think that is also a very important point. Um, that's why I was clear that as well as having um, someone with direct lived experience on the, um, on the task force, that there is someone with that family experience um, central sitting in, in, in at the core of the meeting. But again, it's also, of course, important um, that we make sure we, we get that wider voice of families. I think it's absolutely crucial. Families um, feel the devastating tragedy of, of loss, but they can also be part of the solution in, in helping prevent deaths in the future. So it's absolutely, you're absolutely right, and, and that's why um, it's, they're, they're there and central in the task force. Rona Mackay to be followed by Neil Finlay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the Minister's statement and the programme for Government's announcement of an additional £20 million of funding to be invested to help tackle the crisis. I appreciate this um, was touched on in, in the Minister's answer to Monica Lennon, but could the Minister expand on how the Scottish Government is engaging with wider public service agencies to address issues such as poverty, poor mental health and homelessness to prevent drug-related deaths? Minister. Um, I'll, I'll try and be quicker than I might be, given that some of it was answered be, before. The, the member is right, and, and um, I think I was discussing today, some 80% of people um, with um, drug issues um, will have other, other, other challenges, whether it be mental health issues, homelessness issues, and it is really important that we look to work together. So that will be one of the things that, that the, the Drug Death Task Force will look at, um, supporting Pathfinder projects, um, um, test um, uh, evidence-based approaches to drive forward specific works to improve the quality of service um, and, and I think so I think that's really important the joint protocols working between uh, alcohol and, and drug services and, and other services um, whether it be mental health or, or, or poverty issues some of which are are not within my within this Parliament's control today at the at the the recovery hub um, I was hearing how they have in, had to massively increase the number of food vouchers that they've had to provide to people because the, 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 um, the, the individuals have been sanctioned. Um, you know, we, we've got services which are just not understanding the challenges of someone who is in, in recovery or in treatment, and, and we, ne we need to do better. Neil Finlay, to be followed by Stuart McWillan. Uh, I'll so work with anyone on this issue because this is one of the most important issues in Scotland at the moment, but that must not stop us from holding ministers to account for their action or inaction. So can I ask the uh, minister why in his statement there's no mention of the HIV outbreak in Glasgow at present? Uh, can, I ask, uh, can I ask the minister uh, to confirm that there is uh, someone on the task force who has lived experience, who is either a current or former drugs user so that they can have their input can I ask why the tax, task, task force hasn't met six months after it was announced? And finally, can I ask the minister, does he support the Portuguese model of decriminalisation? I think the minister has asked, answered some of those questions. I think some of these, these questions have already been answered, but I think given that Mr Finlay has specifically asked again about uh, lived experience, I think it's one of the most important things because it's, it's, so I can't say it too often, I, I don't, think it would be right for us to be developing policies without that lived experience so yes there is someone with lived experience on the task force and not only is that they, that, that centrally on the task force but uh, my expectation is and I know Katrina Matheson has already started some of this work um, to look at how they can get a wider view from of that lived experience because it is hugely important I wish everything um, that, that's going on in my portfolio I could include in, in, in the statement, but it would have been maybe the, a whole afternoon statement without time for questions. Um, the HIV outbreak in, in Glasgow is just one piece of the evidence which um, makes the compelling case for an overdose um, prevention facility in Glasgow. Um, it's absolutely overwhelming. The evidence is overwhelming that this would be something that would save lives, and that is one of the, unfortunately, 
issues that compounds that. Services in Glasgow are working hard to work together and working in innovative ways to, to move out and to outreach. Um, and there, there's lessons to be learned from, from Glasgow, uh, the way that Glasgow has approached the HIV outbreak um, in the rest of Scotland, not just for HIV services, but for, for managing to provide service to people who are currently harder to reach. So important points, and apologies, there was about four or five, and I'm not sure I can get to them all. Thank you. I'm going to apologise to Stuart McMillan. We're not going to have a chance, I'm afraid, to call your question. And apologies also to the five other members, Polly McNeill, Sean Robinson, Gail Ross, Annie Wells and Jenny Mara, as we've not had time to be able to take your questions this afternoon. But we have to move on to the next item.